record a video this week, but it's sort of something I've been meaning to do for a while. Not, not just a double thing. One, a book review. I haven't done book reviews for a while. I still need to get around to doing the final book in the Cities in Flight series, but in this case, this book I'll be covering this time is for the um, Sword and Laser Book Club. This is the February pick. I'll probably be doing the March pick next month after the Sword and Laser finish the discussion. And I'm taking a look at The Fold. First off, a little background between me and Sword and Laser. I have been following the Sword and Laser podcast for a very long time, all the way going back to when they were a podcast done by Revision 3. Um, or, I mean, there was actually a podcast before that, but I discovered them as they were a video show done by Revision 3. They had talk show elements. They had all sorts of other wonderful, fun stuff. And then... I think I was like, Star Vision 3, went on hiatus, started up again with Geek and Sundry, went on hiatus again with the video version, but that got me listening to the Wrecker podcast. And so now, I said, I'm getting officially like more and more peripheral in the community, and finally I got, okay, I want to actually like, commit to reading along with the book, with their book club. I had done it off and on in the past, or tried to, the last one I seriously tried was Tagana, which is a long time ago, years ago. But this year, I figured, okay, I'm going to do it. Sort of my belated New Year's resolution, so to speak. And the book in question for this time was The Fold. Um, and The Fold, I actually need to reopen the... Uh, the Fold is by Peter Kleins, no relation to Ernest Klein, the um, Ready Player One guy. Um, and it is... It's probably the lightest book they have covered on the Sword and Laser podcast. I don't mean this in the sense of, like, short or, like, brevity, but, like, in the sense of tone. Um, I can't even say the tone. There's, there's, there are some heavy elements in the plot, but in terms of briskness is the way I'd put it, it's the closest I would describe to being a airport novel type of book. Um, not quite like dad fiction, as much as that description works, but it's a very brisk book. By way of explanation for what it's about, um, the premise of it is it follows a guy by the name of Mike Erickson. He's a high school teacher from Maine who has photographic memory. He, at a point in his past, decided, you know, I really don't want to, like... I could read all the books and learn all the languages and know all the things, but I don't actually want that pressure in my life. I want to try to be, like, I want to try to be normal to a certain extent. And so he instead chose a path that led to becoming a, taking up, becoming a teacher. And, like, honestly, for, for all the complaints to be leveled against this book and its protagonist, this isn't the one I have. Um... This get, this get brought up in the discussion of the Sword and Laser like discussion group, but I don't have that problem with the guy who has um, photographic memory decides to be a high school teacher. It's well explained in the story as to why he did it, why he made this decision, and it makes complete and total sense. Um, and then this and the story kind of quickly sides into um, techno thriller territory where. Mike has an old friend who works for DARPA and who is disappointed by the fact that Mike has decided to let his talents languish by being just a mere high school teacher in Maine. Um, yes, Klein is like Stephen King from Maine, setting stories partially in Maine, but the majority of this is elsewhere in like an air, Southern California. Um... Mike's friend is working with DARPA and working on a, is in charge of, or of supervising a research, well, research project, well, not supervising, sponsoring is a better way of describing it, a research project um, that is for a team that's working on a teleportation portal. And Mike wants, rather, Mike's friend is, asks Mike to check it out. Not because he thinks that they're being flaky and not producing results. Quite the opposite. They are producing results with 
great regularity, but they keep insisting their project is not ready for prime time. And basically, um, Mike's friend wants to say, hey, go in there, figure out what the heck's going on, find out if this actually is ready for prime time, and if these guys won't, uh, won't green light it, figure out how to hell to recreate it so that we can try recreating it somewhere else, make sure that it works, and go go for it. Um, except things are, there are very fishy things going on related to, like, certain, th I'm, I'm going to hold off and do a break before I get into spoilers, um, but there are, there's something fishy going on and Mike ends up discovering this, but it's not the things that either Mike was expecting or he is, his boss is expecting. So in the non-spoiler punk review, this, we'll say this book moves fast. Like, very fast. Like, if you were to adapt this book to, to the screen, you could probably easily get this down to, like, the 90-minute range without chopping out too much of the plot. Probably not even without cha chopping, out, chopping up the plot at all. Um, it This is fine. It doesn't give you a lot to dig into. What you do get is some very strong character work, which is important, considering what the twist is. I'm going to get to that. Um... And if that character stuff doesn't work, then the whole book fails. But outside from like maybe one or two rereads, it makes for a book that doesn't work. But like after subsequent rereads, it doesn't hold up as much. Like one or two to see what foreshadowing you you missed, but otherwise that's it. I mean that said, I checked the book out from the library, and that's probably the right way to go with it. Maybe if you're getting it from the Kindle for like fairly cheap or getting it like as a cheap paperback or when we start flying again, buying it from like traveling and that sort of thing, getting it from an airport bookstore. So spoilers for the fold from this point onward. Quick mention, if what I mentioned from the beginning catches your interest, the link will be links to pick it up will be in the doobly-doo. They are affiliate links. Buying anything through them helps support the show. Spoilers. So, we get two twists in this book. Not one, but two. Um, twist number one, which is actually set up fairly well and is really well foreshadowed over the course of the book, is that what's happening is that it is not a... The portals are not a portals through space. They are also parallel universe portals is that basically the way this the device is set up is that the port is that when you turn on one portal it goes looking for another place that's running the same experiment or has the other portal set up at the same place at approximately the same time and connects with that one and so you are so when a person goes through one, goes through the portal and comes out the other side, the person who comes out the other side in our universe is actually not our universe's version of that person. And it does a great job of setting up, like, barring a cue from that episode of Star Trek The Next Generation with the branching parallel universes that Worf keeps sliding through. Um, I forget the name of the episode. But it takes a good, good, good job of taking a cue from that of, like, look, a lot of these universes, like, aren't that dramatic because they are basically like, based on the idea of, like, in terms of minor, very minor choices in our lives that don't necessarily have very massive repercussions. It doesn't take the tack for a lot of these parallel universes of, of doing the thing of you step on a butterfly and the dinosaurs suddenly show up. Like, they're not these massive chaos theory swaths. One of, like, Like, the, the hinted foreshadowing at the start of this is a person who has gone through the portal, comes back, goes home, and discover, and thinks his wife is not his wife, which, to him, it is accurate because it is not the him from this universe. But then the other hints that come into this is stuff like, hey, who ate the last donut? Who, who, who ate my donut? Um, or, what do you mean? I've always liked crawlers. Or, hey, somebody rearranged all the stuff in my office. What the hell? Um, things like, which are... Little minor things, which also which don't mean much in isolation, and could easily be dismissed as oh, somebody's being really anal and finicky, and particularly if you have pranksters in the office, can easily be dismissed as the actions of that prankster or what have you. Um, like I say, I might say who we 
we ate the last donut, it's like, in the sense of, I saved a donut. Or like, the person who came through saved the donut for after later, whereas the person who went in is the person who ate all, who ate all their donut, their share of the donuts, that sort of thing, um, in terms of the explanation. And that reveal comes much later in it, in the story. That's like the second act reveal of the story. Or like halfway point reveal this t twist, like the midpoint twist. And it's a really well executed twist. It pans out very well, very nicely done, works beautifully. And then there's the second twist, which comes at the third act. And the, that one is a little rough. Um, it also kind of gets this into very close to, I guess what I describe as borrowing from the, uh, laundry files, Charles Strauss laundry files in terms of, oh yeah, the, how we got this to work. We found this like 18th century, um, book, um, about this guy talking about interdimensional demons tra traveling in between dimensions and that are going to wipe out all humanity and if, if they ever come to this world. And it's a bunch of nonsense, but he had a, math a bunch of mathematical proofs involving the interdimensional travel stuff, and all those checked out. So we just plugged them into the software, and there we go. And it, the portal suddenly worked. Look, we were drunk at the time. Not kidding about the we were drunk at the time part. People don't do, like, highly advanced physics and poking holes in the laws of reality while drunk. Never goes well, as this book will make clear. But it at which point, like, it goes into, like, a case nightmare green from the laundry file scenario of, oh, wait, now all of a sudden eldritch abominations are in play and all sorts of nasty nonsense is on the table. And, like, uh, cripes. Um, but also, like, it's also, like, becomes, like, slightly hokey and cliched here because the level of tension isn't that high and it's not a finished, like, this story tonally feels like it's closer to like the repairman like, like the first repairman jack novel which has lovecraftian hell elements to it is part of the um adversary files mythos thing but ultimately it's a very hard-boiled tough guy story and so jack's not going to end up in an insane asylum at the end of that of the first repairman jack novel same sort of thing here is like it's a cataclysmic like it's all sorts of eldritch abomination stuff are in play ancient entities which are unknowable forms that are beyond our scope of reality and are and who think in ways at uh oblique angles to all to our mortal minds and all this that and the other thing but like Ultimately, it's a problem that's solved through the use of explosives um, and some guns and that sort of thing. Like, it's these are definitely enemies where, like, where, like, you know, the brigadier would be like, ah, doctor, finally, something that finally we have something that is not immune to bullets. How refreshing. That sort of thing. Um, and so that last part is a little wonky part in large part because it just comes out of nowhere more or less like again they hint at it but they hint at it in a much less subtle way it's at the point like oh oh you used a bunch of mathematical equations out of a mythos tome and everything worked and you were drunk at the time um no good is clearly going to come of this right up front so do again my rec my my standing recommendation for a preferred way to read the book still stands stick with you know a kindle release paperback check it out from the library uh i wouldn't even recommend using your audible pick for this um save that for something a bit bigger otherwise if you like for, for a lower cost lower overhead way of enjoying the book that's the way to go
Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 